Well, on to our top story today. Home Secretary James Cleverley has laid out the government's plans to tackle net migration with five steps which aim to reduce migrant numbers by 300,000 a year. Speaking to the House of Commons yesterday, James Cleverley introduced plans to hike the minimum foreign worker salary threshold. We will stop immigration undercutting the salary of British workers. Yeah. We will increase the skilled worker earnings threshold by a third to 38,700 from yeah. next spring. Well, joining us in the studio is former Home Office Minister Norman Baker and UKIP's Deputy Leader Rebecca Jane uh, is uh, joining us uh, down the line. Very good to see both of you. Let's start with you, Norman. Finally, the government recognises that immigration is a major problem. I think those numbers caught them off guard, 745,000. James Cleverly, as I said earlier, came up with another five-point plan. Just in terms of, of what he announced, is it enough? Does it go far enough? Is it what people at home want to see? Well, first of all, the, the figures you can believe are the figures which have actually happened. And any projection for the government as to what will happen has to be taken with a Siberian mind full of salt because their <laughs> predictions from 2010 onwards in terms mm. of numbers have been totally wrong and underestimated every single time. So we cannot believe that 300,000 will actually disappear. That's the first thing. Second thing is there is a tension between the economy and the migration figures, because we actually do need people coming into the country. We haven't trained enough people in this country over many decades, actually. And the consequence is we've relied on cheap foreign labour for many jobs, particularly in the health service and social care. And if, if the tap was switched off now, the, the NHS would fall to bits. So there is a tension between what you actually need in the country and, and, and the dislike people have of large numbers coming in, and that's not an easy one to solve. And isn't it, doesn't it just mean that more people will be coming in and taking the highest paid jobs from Brits, ultimately, if, they, if they've increased that threshold to 38,000? It does. It will actually be inflationary yeah. because people will put up wages in order to bring the right people in. Um, and, you know, you're, you're, you, you can't win both ways. If they stop people coming in, then we'll end up with shortages where we need to have people coming in. And if they do stop people coming in, um, if they don't stop people coming in, and then you've got wage inflation as a consequence. So I don't think this is going to work. And, you know, my advice to the Prime Minister is when you're in the hole, stop digging. Well, I mean, it's interesting advice. Uh, probably I second it. Let, let's bring in Rebecca Jane here. James Cleverly seems very happy with his plan. He says, and I think this is crucial, health and care visas, social, uh, social care, they can't bring family dependence. We know this salary, the, the minimum salary you have to earn goes from 27000 to 38000 That shortage occupation list where you have the 20% discount will be axed. They're going to look at the, the types of occupations that stay on that shortage occupation uh, list and also raising the family visa, the min minimum threshold there as well. Does it go far enough for you? No, and I think you said it really well, dear. It's another plan, isn't it? It's another plan with very little action and it's complete and utter sound bites that have no intention behind it. The whole lot of them are completely incompetent and incapable of delivering anything that is going to help migration legally or illegally. And all they're trying to do is win votes. They're not actually trying to solve the problem. And what would... Uh, you're the deputy leader of UKIP. What would you be doing to um, solve the problem rather than to just win votes? Yeah, of course. Now, what I personally would do, it's not quite a UKIP policy, but I think it should be. I think we need to have a complete stop for the next five years on any kind of migration. And I think that we need to invest in the people that are here already. There's one soundbite and there's one plan of action that could absolutely win a next general election for the Conservative Party. It's turn the small boats back. It's actually say that we're going to get tough on immigration and we're not going to be somewhere that's now a destination. But Rebecca, the small boats. To. To, when we talk about small boats, that's a, you know, forgive the pun, but it's a drop in the ocean compared to net migration. We're talking about 40,000 that it has reduced it by a third over the past year. Do you really think that something, also the, the human rights issues of simply turning back boats, the government, mm -hmm. and I am not a supporter of this particular government, they are still working mm -hmm. within certain confines in order to address that problem. However, it is a drop in the ocean compared to net migration. And that's the, that's the question that I'm asking you as, as a UKIP deputy leader. What would you do to, talk, to tackle a... that issue? Yes, it is a drop in the ocean. 
However, what it does is send out a very clear message that we're going to get tough on this matter. It's the biggest thing that people want to see. All we've had for the last goodness knows how many years is lies and nonsensical plans. Rwanda plan, you know, we've been saying it for such a long time. It's never going to work. It's never going to work as long as you're still in ECHR. You have to leave that to actually have any kind of impact on anything to do with migration. And they're absolutely not even willing to look at it, let alone do anything about it. Let, let's go back to legal migration. I think Rebecca Jay makes a very important point here. What about net zero immigration? The fact is we have lots of people in this country who are not working. We've got 3.5 million people on out-of-work benefits. We've got 8.7 million people of working age not in work or not even looking for a job. So surely this is an easy way out. Bring in cheap labour from abroad. We can't cope. We don't have the schools. We don't have the hospitals net zero as rebecca jane says for the next few years one in one out well it's not quite as simple as that because the people who come in aren't necessarily the, the same skill sets as those who are here in the first place or well, not even in the right place you can't make someone who's in kettering go and work fruit picking in berwick it just isn't going to work that way so you have to try and match what's required for the economy with who's got the particular skill set. And many people who come in from abroad have actually got particular skills um, and they're not available at the moment. We failed to train people but over many years. why are we years. bringing in chefs and bricklayers and electricians? We can train our own. Well, <laughs> we can train them, but we haven't been training electricians sufficiently or bricklayers. We haven't been training well, them. Well, they're all doing these well, stupid degrees instead. Well, some of them might be doing that. But the fact is we're starting from this point here and there aren't sufficient homegrown electricians. As far as chefs are concerned, many of the chefs who come in are specialist chefs who work, for example, in Indian restaurants. And let's bear in mind that um, the, Brit the go British government is trying to get trade deals with people. Top of the list from places like India is more people coming into Britain. And can I just ask you about Rebecca Jane's comment about turning back the small boats? Because under the UN Refugee Convention of 1951, she's right. We can turn the boats back. Well, I don't know who you turn them back to. Um, and we had the phrase drop in the ocean. There's plenty of drops in the ocean. People are dying at sea, sadly, across the world as a consequence of this. Look, the small boats issue is actually a small issue. And I know it's uh, taken a lot of attention from the government. But actually, you're right. Compared to migration, legal migration, it's nothing. Mm. Well, I, I think that that's absolutely right, but it is something that obviously the country feels very passionately about. Just in terms of that, Rebecca Jane, can I just come back to you and just ask, in terms of your campaign, what is the sense on the street? What are people saying to you? Do you agree that immigration is going to be probably the most important primary issue as we approach this general election? Yeah, I think you're right, David. I think it probably is, because I think it's the one thing where the government could show some action and they're not doing. And I think that one of the reasons why there is absolute all-time low trust in our government is this. And this is the easiest thing that they could win. But like I say, they don't have any intention of doing anything about it. They just want to keep on feeding us all nonsense because they want to vote. And whatever way that you look on the left or the right or the centre of politics... There is very few people that support their nonsensical Rwanda plan. They want a party that is going to get tough on this issue and it's definitely not the Conservative Party. And Norman, do you think that these policies that they're, you know, supposedly bringing in, um, if Labour came into power, would they get rid of them? Would they keep them? Well, they haven't said, but, I mean, Labour said nothing about anything, to be perfectly yeah. frank, <laughs> in terms of what it might do in power. It's trying to give new hostages to fortune... Uh, to the right-wing press or to the Conservatives. So they <clears throat> basically say that we'll do the same as the Tories, but do it better. That's what the line is on everything. Mm -hmm. So they'll keep their heads down. I don't think they'll change very much if they get in. They'll accept this, I think. But, but just in terms of those announcements from Cleverly, Robert Jenrick has just been speaking now, saying that immigration is far too high. I was very taken by the fact that essentially Jenrick's plans, which he announced on yes. Friday the 23rd, are pretty much what, what uh, Cleverly has just announced. Yes. Well, look, this is, this is about appealing to Tory backbenchers. There's a whole lot of Tory backbenchers who are unhappy about this, for whom this is the most important issue. They're looking at UKIP or reform and saying there's danger of uh, losing votes here. And it is about votes, actually, for them. And that's why the whole plan has been designed to shore up the Tory right wing for political purposes. Norman, uh, thank you very much indeed. Thank you also to you, Rebecca Jane. Thank you very much indeed.